URL-nya hilang lagi. Oke, okay. good afternoon friends, welcome to UC Global Chat, today is the 3rd July 2020, it's Friday, this is our first series to update you about our international university partners, what are the program offer, how they cope with the pandemic era, and what is their nor new normal study. Uh, today, we have uh, Professor Simon Leonik, Pro Vice Chancellor and President of Curtin University, Kalimantan. And our lovely Miss Patricia Kelly, International Officer from Curtin University, Perth, Western Australia. But today, Patricia is in Jakarta. Curtin University has been a great partner with a UC since 2018. It start with a uh, Professor Simon introducing us to Curtin, and we had visited them in Perth in 2019. It was a lovely experience. Uh, also, we also invite uh, Miss Didin from Connect. Hi, Miss Didin. Her company provides visa service for international students to go abroad. In this occasion, Miss Dean will share with us information about visa to Australia. We hope this can support your plan when you choose to have study abroad in the coming years. Of course, this year, I don't think it's possible. We are still in quarantine. Okay, we should start with, uh, do you have uh, Simon already? Yes, I'm here. Good ah, afternoon, everybody. Hi, Professor. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Thank you very much. And good Thank to you see for coming. Here. This is Professor Simon, Pro Vice Counselor and President of Curtin University, Kalimantan, but now Professor in Perth today. Yes, correct. Okay. I'm, in, I'm in Perth at the moment. <laughs> okay. So we have about 65 students with us, Professor. We have three lecturers also. And we also have our marketing, a UC marketing officer. And uh, anytime that student need to ask, uh, just type in a chat. Uh, our uh, Shirley and Ovin will manage to answer the question that it can be answered directly, okay? So, uh, good afternoon, Professor Simon. Welcome to UC Global Chat. It's been a wonderful for you to share with us about update new normal study in Curtin University. Time and place are yours. Okay, thanks very much and uh... Um, what should I say, Salamat Siang or Salamat Sore now in uh, <laughs> Indonesia. So I hope you're all well. Before I start, Ibu, I'd just like to um, wish you all the very best um, from, from all of the staff at Curtin. We, we are hearing news that the COVID crisis in, in East, uh, Eastern Indonesia, Eastern Java is quite bad at the moment and being a, a sister um, province to Western Australia. Obviously, we, we send you our regards and we hope that everyone uh, stays safe and, and follows the rules and does the best they can at this particularly difficult time. Um, here, I'm actually in Perth at the moment. So I was visiting Perth um, as the lockdown started across 
um, uh, the, the ASEAN region. And actually they closed the borders here um, in Perth in Western Australia. And uh, we've been lucky enough that there has not been a new COVID case in Perth now for about eight weeks. So I think officially Perth has become the, the safest place on earth in um, terms of COVID, which is, is fantastic. But it also does mean that our borders are closed um, for people coming in and out. Um, and so it is, it is quite a restrictive time in, in terms of travel, um, both for students coming in and for people like myself who uh, um, need to go back to Malaysia at some time. And it looks like it'll be that way at least until um, next month. Um, but I wanted to um, introduce a few things about Curtin University um, generally, and then just a couple of words on Curtin Malaysia. I will then hand over to um, Patricia Kelly and um, then she will, she will talk and then perhaps there might be something about Curtin Malaysia that we, that we want to talk to more generally. So Curtin University um, is a fairly young university, but it is a very highly ranked university. The latest QS rankings position us at 217 in the world. And uh, a number of other rankings that are based on research, we are uh, actually in the top, inside the top 200 universities in the world, which makes us essentially uh, in the top 1% of global universities, which for our age is, is a fantastic result. Uh, we're very much uh, a university that is driven by research and we have a number of specialisations, um, particularly in the IT, engineering, uh, mining and other science areas and, and perhaps Patricia will talk more about that later. The most exciting thing I think about um, uh, Curtin University is the fact that we are a global university and we have, we have campuses around the globe. So we have a campus in, in, uh, in Perth. We also have another one in Kalgoorlie in the mines because we are the second best mining school in the world. Um, and then we have a campus in, as you said, Kalimantan or, or Borneo Island. Um, sorry, I just, uh, I forgot to turn my alarm off to remind me to, 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 to talk. Um, uh, so at, at Miri in um, Borneo. We then have a campus in Singapore, a campus in Dubai, uh, in United Arab Emirates, and a campus in Mauritius, um, Curtin Mauritius. And we also have significant teaching centres, um, which aren't campuses yet, in China, uh, in Sri Lanka, and also in Vietnam. So we are truly a global university. And one of the beauties for students is the ability to to mix and match the course and the mobility between those, those different campuses. And it's exciting thought for a student that they can actually do, you know, effectively they can do a campus at, at each of, uh, sorry, a, a semester at each of the campuses. Um, most students tend to um, uh, come to Curtin Malaysia and do one or two years of their degree. The fees are um, somewhat cheaper than the Australian campus and then go to the Australian campus for the last one or two years of their degree and that seems to work uh, very very well for the students. They have a lot of uh, different experiences then and mix with students from countries all over the world. Um, Curtin, Curtin has around about 25% of its student population international students and they come from uh, around about 100 countries around the world. Obviously, at the, moment, at the moment, it's very difficult for students to get uh, into Australia. So um, those, the, the students that are here um, continue, but there's no new students that have been coming in in 2020, uh, un unfortunately. So it won't be until 2021 when new students can come in to Perth. That said, the other campuses around the globe are taking new students in second semester and also uh, into first semester next year, including the Curtin Malaysia um, campus, and there's opportunities for students to join that. 
As far as the, um, the, Cal the Borneo campus, Curtin, Malaysia goes, we are very strong in the engineering um, fields as well as uh, IT, um, cyber security is very, very popular. But we also have a, a vibrant business school as well. And there is a couple of health courses um, that occur there as well. We work very closely with the, the government of Malaysia and in particular the government of Sarawak. Um, and uh, heavily involved in um, significant digital futures project with Industry 4.0 and also with uh, the Smart Cities project in Mirin, where there's a real interconnectivity between uh, the city itself, the businesses and, and the university. And this project is ongoing. Currently, our campus is conducting eight significant research projects for the Sarawak government in um, the area of smart cities and digital futures. So we have very, very um, strong um, relationships with both industry and government there, and that gives opportunities for students to be involved there. The campus uh, has around about 3,000 students. Um, many of those students stay on campus and enjoy the experience of uh, dormitory life with um, students um, from other parts of the globe um, and from all over Malaysia. We have a lot of students from, from uh, Peninsula Malaysia um, as well as uh, from Borneo Island. Quite a few Indonesian students and students from uh, the Indo-China region as well. So it's quite a, quite a big campus. In fact, I am told reliably it is the biggest Australian campus of any Australian university outside Australia. So it is a significant um, in infrastructure there and um, hopefully um, Patricia might share some of those, of those pictures with you later on. Uh, the campus also, as I mentioned, has not only does it have the strong research links with the um, Sarawak government, but it does have very strong uh, research, particularly in energy areas um, and chemical engineering. That's real strengths. And uh, just in the last couple of months, been awarded about uh, one million ringgit from uh, different government programs uh, on uh, research areas, particularly in that chemical engineering area. So that's a little bit about um, Curtin more generally and uh, Curtin Malaysia. Uh, fantastic student experience, I believe, for all students. We put a lot of effort into making sure that um, students are well looked after. But uh, what I might do is hand over to our, our Indonesian country manager, Patricia Kelly, who will talk uh, in some more depth uh, about the campus both in Australia and in Malaysia, and also um, some of the, the course options and facilities. So over to you, Patricia. It is now your stage. Thank you, Ibu Suryani. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope it's okay. If do I, Ibu, do I need to mix between Bahasa Indonesia or in, in English or? Just yeah, you can mix. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, but often, would you mind sharing the screen, please? Sorry to trouble you. Now, we tried this, guys. I tried it, but uh, natural experiences. Uh, yeah. Can you start from the beginning, please? Okay. Um, so again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Kelly. I am the in-country staff for uh, Curtin International, Curtin University, uh, based in Jakarta. Um, yeah, and yes, I can speak Bahasa Indonesia. So uh, any one of you later on wants to ask more about uh, Curtin, I'm happy to take um, any questions or inquiry in Bahasa Indonesia, okay? Um, maybe uh, now, Let's um, go to the next slide, um, but often. Yeah, so today's agenda, uh, I would like to introduce you about Perth as a, uh, one of the uh, capital cities in uh, Australia. 
as well as Curtin University as a, a global campus and also a Perth campus. And uh, I will have a session about um, uh, explaining you what is, what we are, who we are uh, through photos on the Curtin, Curtin Innovation uh, uh, section. And then uh, Simon already uh, mentioned about uh, Miri and Curtin Malaysia campus, but I will have a, a, a couple of videos as well at the end about uh, our campus in Malaysia. So first, let's uh, enjoy the video about Perth and Western Australia. These landscapes may look like they're from completely different worlds. But the amazing thing is, they're all from Western Australia. Not just a place of natural beauty. Its capital city, Perth, is the Western gateway to Australia and has become one of the country's most exciting destinations. Buzzing with new dining, drinking, cultural and entertainment hubs, plus a mix of new accommodation. The city now has some of the best and most affordable rooms in Australia. This is complemented by a unique mix of natural experiences right on the city's doorstep. Even our unique wildlife is making waves globally. Once you've sampled Perth, go explore Australia's other reef, Ningaloo. Here, you'll find an underwater wonderland, a short walk from shore, as well as these friendly giants. Or to Margaret River and the southwest, with its world famous wineries, surf, tall ancient trees, and fresh produce, including the prized black truffle, and a whole lot of greenery. There's also WA's legendary outback with its old gold mining towns and country charm. And other sites you won't see anywhere else in the world you're going to want to make time for the Kimberley and Pilbara regions too. One of the world's last true wilderness areas, home to breathtaking natural wonders. As well as a rich culture and history over 40,000 years old, which can be explored with one of our many Aboriginal guides. WA is also home to the world's largest collection of wildflowers. And if all that wasn't enough, there's a whole calendar of events for lovers of art, sport, and food and drink. Western Australia and Margaret River have got everything that I love, everything that I travel across the world for, as indeed I do, which is, you know, incredible food, wonderful wine, and such amazing natural beauty. So for me, it's got everything. As the saying goes, it's not just about the destination, it's about the journey, which is especially true when you look at how easy it is to get to and around WA. So if you're looking for the very best of all worlds, you'll find it in Western Australia. Um, uh, some background about Perth and Western Australia. For those of you who haven't been there, you should. It's a very beautiful city. Uh, Ibu Suryani had experienced that as well. Um, so uh, why Perth, Western Australia? So if you go back to the uh, video just now, uh, number one is proximity. So it's uh, from Surabaya. Um, it's actually very close. You need to, to fly via Denpasar. So from Denpasar, Bali is three to three and a half hours. If you are originally from Jakarta, it's four to four and a half hours by uh, Garuda. I need to mention the, the, the brand because they're the only one so far that is uh, flying direct from Jakarta to, uh, to Perth. And also the time difference is only one hour. So it's similar to uh, 
those of you living in Bali. So if now is 3.16 p.m. Um, uh, WIB, uh, if, if it's in Perth, now it's 4.16, okay? So I usually don't get a, uh, I cannot really use an excuse, oh, I, I, I'm on jet lag, sir, so can I have a break? No, uh, because it's only one hour difference, yeah? Um, so um, the weather, uh, it is not on, on my slide, but the weather-wise, it's exactly, I would say it's similar to Indonesia, to Surabaya. Um, it's just that the difference, um, we are humid. Uh, if it's in um, Australia or in Perth, it's a dry heat. So um, you don't get sweat a lot. So if you're lazy to wash your clothes, you can wear it the next day. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, so if you see the photo on the slide, that blue sky, it's original. So it's not done by Photoshop, okay? Um, every day uh, when the sun is out, that is majority of the, the sky looks like in Perth. So um, basically Perth is not only one of the top places to go uh, based on New York Times last year, but it is also one of the world's healthiest and sunniest cities. And uh, in terms of cost of living, for those of you who, who, are, in, who are interested um, to later on take a further study in Perth, um, it's around about 1,000 to 1,500 Australian dollars per month. But then again, depending on your lifestyle, yeah, uh, because if you, if you buy coffee um, every day, um, two or three times a day, then you need an extra budget uh, for that, okay? Uh, and also, we don't have Starbucks in Perth. Don't cry, but um, yes, we don't. Um, because we are uh, very much into um, a local product. So uh, we are very proud of local, our local coffees, okay? So you should try. Forget about Starbucks for while you are in Perth. Um, and also as a student, you will get 40% discount on all public transport. So our public transport in Perth uh, is um, train, bus, and ferry, okay? And then um, last year, Perth just uh, was just being declared as a regional where if you know the information about studying in Australia for a minimum of two years, you will have the opportunity of us uh, live and work in Australia for another two years. But because um, Perth is regional now, hence if you want to add um, another year, you can because you deserve um, a total of three years post-study work visa. Okay, um, next, but of it. Um, this is where curtain is. So uh, Simon did mention about uh, where uh, our locations are. So the main campus is in Perth, uh, and we also have uh, a campus in Kalgoorlie, the mining site in West in Western Australia. We also have a campus in Singapore. Uh, as well as in Miri in Sarawak, Malaysia. And we also have uh, Dubai and Mauritius. Um, if you cl click next, Ma'ofi, um, if you move a little bit the, the globe, you can, say, you can see the positioning are in, is in, encircling the Indian Ocean Rim. So that's where we are uh, of our global campuses. Now with this uh, position, uh, Simon did uh, touch about this as well. As a student, um, you, will, you will get the opportunity of uh, campus transfer. So minimum one semester you can do in Singapore and then one semester in Dubai, one semester in Perth. You can do all over the world. Um, but again, there is um, other things that you need to think about. I don't think you would want to move around every semester, but you can. All right, and um, it is a, the same degree. So for example, you study, let's say management, and then you, you want to go to Singapore for your other uh, semesters, you can. And uh, because it is the same degree, 
And when you actually graduate, you have one um, single ijaza. So your certificate of completion will not will not say Curtin University Dubai, Curtin Singapore, but it will say one logo, one name, Curtin University, because in, in the world there's only one Curtin University. Yeah, so that's the beauty of, of us being a global campus. Okay, um, next, Ba'ofi. So this is Curtin University in Perth. So if uh, UC is located in Surabaya Barat, um, I'm trying to, to be like uh, your students, Ibu Suryani. So UC, that's how you call it, right? Your university? Yes, yes. Um, so um, if UC is in Surabaya Barat, Pakuan area, uh, Curtin University is uh, in Bentley. So that's the name of the suburb, yeah? Um, it is a very big university. If you, if you see on your screen, it may not look that big, but it is huge. And uh, it, it is, the land itself is 116 hectares. It is and, huge. Uh, yes. And then it's, uh, the, if you see on that area, uh, the campus is surrounded by housing. So you have the option to, um, to have uh, on-campus accommodation or off-campus accommodation, all right? For you to go around, you have uh, a number of options. One, you can walk, that is if you live uh, walking distance uh, from the campus, or you can cycle. Uh, obviously, you need to buy a, a bicycle, which so happens in Indonesia is a trend now until they ran out of stocks. Um, of the bicycle shops. Um, so you can get a secondhand bicycle or the brand new one. Later on, when you move, uh, you fly back to Surabaya, you can sell again. Um, and then we also have a curtain bus. Curtain bus is a free bus. Uh, it's just that you need to be in the location of the, uh, the bus route. Okay, um, that, or, that is for uh, students as well as the community. And uh, the, the other option will be a uh, bus and you will get automatically 40% discount for the bus uh, uh, fare, okay? Uh, and Curtin University um, has over 56,000 students and 30% or one third of, of those students are international. Indonesia is not the biggest, but it's also not the smallest. So we try very best to actually make the international mix uh, uh, just nicely for everyone, for every student to experience their internationalization. Um, next, Ophi. Um, just, I think the same with, uh, with uh, UC as well. The campus provides facilities that uh, students and or staffs can also uh, utilize. So we have Curtin Stadium. You can do your, your any sports in there. It's an indoor uh, as well as outdoor uh, of a, a sports, a sports area. And we also have a wellness center, counseling and disability services all across, the, all in the campus. And uh, for banking, you don't need to worry. We have multiple ATMs and one uh, Bankwest branch inside the campus. So you don't need to go outside the campus. Um, we also have a multicultural, um, multi-faith prayer room. So for those of you uh, who wants to um, uh, practice their um, religious activities, you can. Uh, as well as uh, we have Moshola um, separate by itself within the campus. The unique, well, I find it unique because I've been to, um, I visited Mushola in Indonesia. Uh, they're actually open for anyone to come in. But for, uh, for Mushola that is in the campus of Curtin, it has a, a code that you need to know to be able to enter the gate. That does not, that does not mean uh, we, we try to prevent uh, people to come in and uh, use the facility but it's uh, to, to actually maintain the sanctity of the place, okay? 
We also have a main library uh, on that photo to your uh, right. That's the main library, but we also have uh, um, libraries under the faculties of the school. And the uh, Kent University is a smoke-free university campus. So for those of you who smoke, you need to go outside the campus and it's very big campus and stand by the main street and smoke. Okay, you're not allowed to smoke inside. And it, obviously it's a free Wi-Fi wherever you are within the campus. Um, next is our rankings. Uh, Simon did touch about the, our current rankings, our latest one. Uh, it depends on the uh, uh, ranking provider, uh, ranking body. Yeah. Um, for for us, we we see ourselves moving to premium university uh, based on uh, our strong in research. Therefore, if you see uh, based on academic ranking world of universities, uh, we are number nine nationally. Maybe some of you have heard about group of eight. Now group of eight is one to eight. And until, until doomsday, they won't change. So stay until, stay like that. The member is eight. So we are just right behind the, the group of eight. And uh, Simon mentioned about our ranking, the latest one. Um, you can look at uh, the QS, World University Ranking. So last year, 2020, we are number two, 230, but 2021 new ranking, we are number 217. So it's very significant jump. That's how we we proud and obviously not just happy uh, because of that, but we, we always want to um, put strong effort uh, to grow and increase um, uh, to high level. Uh, in terms of, uh, um, next, Maofi. So in terms of uh, subjects, um, those are some of our subjects uh, within the top 100 in the world. Our latest one based on academic ranking of World University, we are number one for mathematics in Australia, and we are number two for earth sciences and chemical engineering in Australia. So, um, like I said, it, it depends on which which ranking body that you use. Okay, so um, that's uh, our positioning in the world and nationally. And Curtin University, maybe it's quite different with UC. Uh, we only have four faculties. If you go next, uh, Mbaofi, uh, the first um, that I would like to introduce is obviously the biggest, uh, the faculty that has biggest Pop, bigger population, uh, faculty of business and law. Those are our area of specialization. And uh, our faculty uh, holds uh, AACSB accreditation. So if you look at the logo, the green logo, uh, that may not matter to you much, but it is a big deal for uh, faculty of business and whole university in the world. Um, it took us six to seven years to actually uh, get that accreditation. So with that, we are proudly say that uh, our, um, our programs are in that quality of uh, global. Um, and then the next faculty is our faculty of health sciences. If, we, if I want to relate with UC, uh, you can see um, a nutrition and food science as well. Uh, next, Ofi. Yes. Um, so these are under the Faculty of Health Sciences, but if it's uh, related to UC, it will be uh, food science. Uh, next will be um, Faculty of Humanities. Um, so with this faculty, uh, it's basically um, what we have here in FISIP, equivalent, but on the, the first level, that actually a bit strange for majority of Indonesians because architecture, urban, regional usually falls under faculty of engineering, but for us, it's under humanities, okay? Uh, because obviously those programs relate very closely with uh, humans. Last but not least is faculty of science and engineering. 
within this faculty. Um, you can, if I relate to you, uh, we have uh, computing. Yeah, so, um, and uh, I personally have visited your Apple Academy and it's amazing. All right, um, now this is another video to summarize the, uh, about Curtin University, um, particularly in Perth. Curtin University is actually one of the most international universities in the world and that's been formally recognised. What that means for students is they get the opportunity to come here and work with students from around the globe. We also have partnerships throughout the world in Latin America, in the United States, in China and beyond. And again, students can get a diverse range of experiences. I visit the campus of Curtin University and I was very impressed about what I saw. It. Of course, we've got world-leading learning facilities, we've got world-class laboratories, but you've just got to walk around the campus itself. It's a beautiful environment. There's Wi-Fi for the students, the library's open 24 hours a day. You can go to class, you can actually complete your studies, get some lunch from the food truck, catch up with your friends for your group assignment. Well, one of the key things that I've heard from all of our Latin American students that are currently studying at Curtin University is they're amazed at how welcoming the university and with the West Australian community in general has been. You are very open, very optimist. And uh, that's why I feel that between Perth and Ecuadorians, we, we are many, many elements in common. The one thing in Perth, it's got a big city feel to it. It's got public transport, the university campus is incredibly close to the city, there's great accommodation and it's incredibly safe as well. It's a lovely city, it's a lovely corner of this continent. I feel that it's a fantastic, fascinating to have the opportunity to study here. So that is um, about Curtin University um, Perth campus. Now with this next session, um, I basically will show you some photos. Uh, but before we go to the next slide, uh, Curtin University was born as a polytechnic institute in 1967. It used to, um, it used to call um, Western Australia Institute of Technology. Because we were born as a polytechnic institute, therefore our uh, programs materials are 70, 80% practical, and then the rest of uh, uh, theory. Uh, and also we, are, we work closely, uh, we work very closely with industry as well in all of our programs, in all of our faculties. Therefore, uh, students uh, uh, may uh, experience um, a contact with a uh, industry, whether it's a it's a, like a guest lecture or internship, internship part of curriculum or internship outside the curriculum, um, and uh, there's a, a placement as well. So that's how uh, we give we provide students uh, of the practical side of it. Now, um, next, this is the front face of Curtin University Perth Bentley campus. Um, if you ever come and visit our campus, that is where you usually stop with your taxi or Uber. Uh, no Grab, no Gojek, okay, in Perth, it's only Uber. So if you ever want to come to Perth and decide to study at Curtin University, you need to reinstall your Uber account again. Well, if it's disappeared, then make a new one, all right? So that's the front face of our campus. Um, and then um, I'm going to show you typical of classes that we have. Um, next is our uh, room called the agency. So this is a class. So the, the agency, uh, the name of the room, is uh, basically used uh, by um, a marketing students, so digital marketing or marketing student. Uh, yeah, Ibu Suryani had visited. Um, so the nine blue screen on the, on your screen um, basically shows. So for example, uh, you know how we do, we do things via social media. So if you want to uh, do some research or uh, assignment, um, you 
you came up with one um, at e advertisement, and then once you upload it, you can see on those nine screen how many females, how many males, where they are, are they are they in Pakuan or in Tangerang, just like me, or um, eh, what's the what's the age, whether it's a uh, young millennials like you guys or uh, young young millennials, quote unquote, like mine. Um, so you can actually uh, um, uh, get results whether your e-advertisement work in the market or not. So that's one of the uh, use of this particular class. Um, next is our trading room. Now with this trading room, obviously, um, the students studying finance, yes, this is for finance students uh, predominantly. Uh, it is equipped with uh, uh, Bloomberg software, all of the, uh, 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 the computers in there, okay? And the big screen on your left, on the left, is actually a, a live screen um, from uh, the stock, um, the world stocks uh, exchange market floor, yeah? Um, next is our latest, one of our latest additional um, um, uh, class, typical of class, which um, the management, uh, um, the management HQ. So this room is used um, by a student studying management program. Um, at the moment is um, used for a postgraduate and uh, the screens are live. And uh, this is to teach you how one of the one of the purpose is to teach you how to uh, uh, work and make decision as a CEO. So it's it's very very uh, uh, high tech um, room of our class with this one. Um, another type of class which is this is for health sciences student. Okay, um, it basically this is uh, the table there. It's like a uh, giant tablet. We, it is called Anatomage. So this is for uh, students um, trying to study the um, human anatomy. So besides the cadavers, they still, they still use the cadavers, uh, they can also utilize this technology. Okay, so um, that's uh, typical of uh, uh, class for health sciences. And we also have a, a avatar as well um, for health sciences students. This is um, for our arts, screen arts and journalism, communication students. Uh, we have a um, green, uh, green room, green studio as well. And we also have a, a curtain FM for radio. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's basically uh, live for, for, uh, within the campus. Um, the next is another type of our classes. So on top is collaborative learning spaces. This is um, what we call a typical of formal classes. So if it's in Indonesia, predominantly uh, you will sit with uh, so many others within the room, but facing one direction, not the, not the band, okay? So just one direction. Um, but with this room, as you can see, we have uh, two, three, four screens. Um, so wherever the lecturer is standing, you don't actually need to look at him or her. So you can look at the screen and then raise your hand if you want to uh, ask questions or uh, address uh, a, a point or something. You don't need to face him or her and it's not Tidak sopan, so it's it's still sopan because that's how we do in in a class. Uh, that table can be split into three if you if you are required to uh, discuss in a in a smaller group. The informal learning spaces, the photos uh, at the bottom, those are uh, another type of uh, informal class. So you can actually have a di group discussion, even talk to your lecturer in a smaller group in those uh, spots as well. We also have what we call place activation. 
Um, yes, next, Mofi. Yeah, so this may not look, if it's in Surabaya or in Indonesia, this is like eating bakso uh, and then just talk about girls or boys. But it, it, with, at curtain, this is also another type of um, informal uh, class. Okay, it, it, bear in mind that your lecturer can also be one of, one of them sitting on the bin bags. So that's just a, a, a different type um, that we offer to students. And if you see the, the third photo on the bottom, it says hammock hotel. Yeah, it's exactly like that. So you can also lay down in one of the hammocks and then have discussion with your friends. All right, now with the next photo, this is our main library. Okay, uh, if you still remember the, the picture of the map that I show you in the beginning, um, from this library and our libraries in other campuses, it's actually connected. So let's say if I am in a Singapore campus, I can actually obtain the iLectures, online resources or electronic books from Perth or vice versa. Even students in studying in Singapore can also uh, borrow or obtain um, iLectures from the campus in Malaysia. So it's, we are connected, uh, although we are separated in different countries. Within the um, library, yes, we have two sleeping pots. At the moment, only two. We cannot have any, because <laughs> if we have many, then food. it becomes a hotel. Um, so these two sleeping pots, uh, you can actually use as students, okay? You don't need to put a coin in there, just that um, if there is someone, you need to wait. So you can utilize that for power nap. If you're so tired or so sleepy, um, you can go to the library, I forgot which floor, um, and then you can lay down for about 10 minutes with a song. So there are options for songs as well. Um, I've never tried it, but they say it's really soothing. The problem is power nap for me, it doesn't work. Uh, 10 minutes is nothing. Um, so um, this, Next photo is basically to show you uh, the, the, uh, the partnerships with the industry, okay? Cisco has an office inside the campus. So I think if, if, there, if there is nothing changed, we are one of not very many universities that host a Cisco office in the, in the campus. So you guys at UC are lucky to have Apple Academy inside your campus. We are also lucky to have Cisco inside the campus. So students studying computing, um, they also have, uh, they also can get the opportunity to uh, do internship uh, with Cisco office. Okay, I've met uh, a few of our students uh, doing the internship when I visited the office. So that's to show the relationship. Now, the strong relationship with Cisco this is one of our strong relationship. We have this driverless bus. So it looks cute, small, but it has 11 people of capacity. So you can actually get in there, uh, but uh, this is predominantly used for um, research and it only operates within the campus. Um, you can use that to move from one, one building to another, but if you're already, 15 minutes late, you better run. It's no use to use this uh, bus because it's already set uh, at a certain, very slow. You won't get to your camp, to your class if you use this. So run is better. So that's uh, our driverless bus with that, no driver in, inside the bus, yeah? Uh, this is one of uh, our, uh, our innovation. So we use this, facial recognition technology. Uh, the, in the beginning, it was used for research for dementia uh, patient. But now it is also used by marketing students. So apparently this technology can tell you if you're happy looking at apple or you're, you're, more, you're happier looking at uh, chocolate or orange or whatever. So that's, this is useful research again, yeah? 
Um, next is um, this. This is a, a new uh, look of our campus. I'm not really sure when Ibu Suryani visited. We already have this uh, fin finalized. Um, this is our curtain bike hub. Again, this is about bicycles. So it's you look at the bridge, and under the bridge is actually a room where you store your bicycle. Yeah, it's not okay. been there when I was. Yeah, there. It, it was still. I think it was still uh, being um, under the floor yeah, under construction. Yeah, so uh, it is just one. It it just won uh, an architecture award for that um, bike hub. Okay, so that's um, if if you're so into. I don't think you can bring your Brompton from Surabaya to Perth, um, but if you can, that's uh, that's to show that we we have even for bicycle we have the facility the proper facilities. Yeah. Next is our um, new addition. So this is Curtin University Midland campus. So Midland is still uh, within Western Australia, um, and uh, basically this is for this is our brand new campus only uh, starts to be used this July for health sciences students. And where is, where is Midland? Midland, I'm not Near. sure how, um, if it's by train, you need to use train, I think, Ibu. I'm not really sure how to, if you can, I, you can drive, but it's a bit far from Perth. Um, and uh, this architecture just won two awards. Just recently, a few days ago, uh, oh. we, we were announced. So uh, it's it's a, actually, I think, much better from the from the look, much better look than Bentley. But because it's new, obviously, uh, more um, um, high tech kind of uh, building. So, yeah. so yes. Now with the next, um, because uh, Ibu um, Soriani requested for me to, can you click three times, uh, Mbak Ofi? Um, this is just, just to show you the typical of accommodation. Yeah. In is it dormi Perth. dormitory? Um, yes, this is a dormitory, but I used to live in an apartment. The, the view, the feel of the, of the house, of the apartment, similar to these photos. So if you, if you rent um, uh, an on a dormitory or off campus, um, if we talk about on-campus accommodation or asrama, and it looks exactly like this. And uh, Australians are really into privacy. Therefore, um, one room, one student. So it, don't compare with what you've seen in the American movies where their dormitory actually uh, can consist of uh, two to six people in one room, share. With this one, unless you request share, ma maximum only two uh, people, but ma majority of our on-campus is single. So one student, one room. Um, and then um, you will share the living area as well as um, a kitchen and dining area. Okay, there are some units uh, will have ensuite, so ba bathroom inside your room, um, but majority you need to share. Okay, if I were you, I don't want to have my bathroom inside the room because then I need to, I am responsible to clean it if regularly. So it's, it's very hard unless, unless you know you can clean well. All right, so as you can see, the room is very clean. You are actually ready to fly to Malaysia. So a little bit about Malaysia. Uh, I don't want to uh, re repeat really uh, what Simon had explained. Um, we, we are landing in Malaysia now, Mbak Ofi. So you can, yes, thank you very much. So this is uh, Curtin University Mary campus in Malaysia. It's another big campus. Uh, it's a uh, one. Um, no, you need to go back first, but Ofi, don't go too fast. Yeah. So uh, the campus is actually a garden campus. 
um, with the size is 1,200 acre. Yeah, so the whole thing that you see uh, in, the, in your screen is the, the campus. Now let's, um, let's explore Mary with the video. a great life there <laughs> yes it's actually very nice um, so um, a brief facts um, for those of you uh, may not remember about your geography back in the high school so Sarawak is the largest state in Malaysia and uh, the capital city is Kuching it's in Kalimantan Island Yes, in the Borneo, it's on the top of Pontianak, and um, the capital city is Kuching. Now, Miri is the second biggest city with over 350,000 population. So don't compare that with the uh, Surabaya population, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Uh, and then uh, basically, it is close. Miri to Kuching is, is even far in comparison to Miri to Brunei. So only 20 minutes drive from Brunei border. And you can also uh, visit um, Bandar Seri Begawan if you want. Um, obviously, you don't need to, to have a visa. So you can actually uh, drive back and forth. 
And the cost of living is about 1,700 per month, ringgit Malaysia. Okay, so that's, that's the difference between uh, the campus in Australia or even in Singapore to uh, the Malaysia campus, yeah? Kent University Malaysia is established in 1999 and it is owned by Sarawak State Government as well as Kent University. And uh, it is again being um, polytechnic when we were born. Uh, we also have uh, industrial partners with uh, um, uh, collaborating with us as part of the uh, uh, practical side of of the student's experience. All right, so, um, and um, the next slide to show you the uh, programs that offered in Curtin Malaysia campus. So as you can see for, uh, for business, we have uh, those programs and humanities as well as engineering. So um, for computing uh, students of UC, you can have the options of Malaysia and or Perth, okay, as well as the business um, students. Now, uh, if, if I've been to Miri once, but I, um, I personally don't really like Jakarta type. So I like Miri and the fact that uh, Miri is all, has a secret diving sites as well, uh, where you can, if for those of you divers or can dive, um, you can, you may meet or encounter the blue whales. Only certain places in the world, you can see the blue whales. One of the, place, well, one of the places will be Miri. And um, it's, if you see, oh, it's only 350,000 population, so not very many people, hence very sepi, yeah, compared to um, Kediri, for example. Um, I would say, it depends on your lifestyle, obviously, but surprisingly, um, cafes and restaurants, they actually open until 11 p.m. or so every day. And then I said, well, you don't have so many, peop so many people in Mary. Why are you open until late? Well, apparently people from Brunei drive to Mary for entertainment. Okay, so bear in mind, if you go to Brunei, you don't, you don't actually get uh, much uh, entertainment. So then um, uh, Brunei citizens will then uh, drive to Miri to hang out and uh, make friends. All right, so this um, uh, video will be the last of my presentation. <laughs> Welcome to Curtin, Malaysia. An Australian university situated in the vibrant city of Miri. Home to Malaysia's century-old petroleum industry. And gateway to Borneo's spectacular national parks. This is where expert teaching staff guide students to discovery in the fields of engineering, science, commerce, and the arts. At Curtin, Malaysia, you receive a global education. And the distance between the Malaysian and Perth campuses is no distance at all. You will learn in world-class facilities. Or your classroom might be the stunning natural beauty of Borneo. Here, students from over 45 countries share their culture, knowledge and experiences. And innovation comes from multiple points of view. Beyond academic achievement, Curtin Malaysia prides itself on a culture that promotes community engagement and develops the leaders of tomorrow. This is where you have the space to study, achieve and discover. <laughs> and where colleagues become lifelong friends. Curtin Malaysia is about following your passion, achieving your potential and gaining a degree that prepares you for the dynamic global marketplace. Okay, okay. That, con that concludes my presentation. Yeah. Can you click the last uh, uh, slide, Ofi? Yes, thank you very much. I see on, in the chat room, uh, there are many questions. So uh, thank you very much. Um, Laura, Tessa, Josie, Gracia, Valentina, William, um, Agustinus. 
think. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the rest of you who haven't uh, actually um, uh, uh, put your questions, um, that is my contact. So you may welcome to get in touch with me via email. And my mobile number is also WhatsApp number. Um, so uh, please address your um, questions later on um, if we haven't had time to actually answer one by one. Um, over to you, Ibu Suryani. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. It's been a great presentation. I, I made you check for quick check. Some people already give a, a question. Yes. Uh, do you have PhD program in computer science? Uh, yes, we do. In Perth? Yes, in Perth. Uh, I, I can check for Malaysia, but uh, yes, definitely okay. in Perth. Okay, so that's from Padi. Yeah. Then another is Rani, coming from, you can, yes? Yeah, you can do your PhD in Malaysia as well. Ah. Um, but you may have a shared supervisor. That's all, one from Perth, one from Malaysia. Oh, okay. Another one from William. Say, I would like to ask the program of Curtin University in Perth is for double degree or postgraduate. Actually, for UC is double degree. We have study abroad. So later on, meanwhile, Ibu Didin from uh, Connect will tell you about the visa uh, regulation. But I do have uh, put some uh, PPT for you to share what kind of program actually we have with uh, wait with Curtin University. Okay, okay. So uh, quickly checking, yeah. So this is the, the curtain. Okay, we have study abroad. If you see other uh, university, yes, we have it already. Uh, we have curtain for study abroad. Uh, you can check for it available for FMB, FEK, FPAR, so FECOM, FTE, okay? Study for one or two semester abroad. Transfer credit, no degree, okay? I have to do quicker. So this one is a summer winter program. Now we don't have because this is customized. Actually, this is only one to five week abroad. It's open for all faculty uh, students. If you're interested, uh, uh, put a check in the uh, feedback form later on. Uh, this one is COIL. COIL is a collaboration international lecture, actually. Now we are engaging with uh, uh, one or two subjects every semester that you will be uh, co-teaching with the lecturer from abroad. We are waiting for curtain part also and from uh, Malaysia. Patricia, promise me about Singapore also, yeah? Okay, Ibu. Okay. <laughs> now dual degree. Do, uh, study two semester with BA degree earned. So this is a dual degree. In Indonesia, it's called joint degree. So it's only specific for a specific faculty only, FMB, business, and IT, I guess. So uh, last time, um, I think it's more on food science also, yeah? It's open up for food science. But uh, if you ask me, uh, is it on enough for study two semester? Yes, this is our proposal for uh, 13, but actually I see the regulation from Australia is two plus two. So when you follow this session, remember you need to ask as many as you want because it's only one hour, but it, determine for your two years, maybe two years living in uh, Perth, Australia, okay? So, uh, uh, we have global internship that what I would ask for later on, but it is available only in certain faculties. Selection participant choose by industry, not only by partner university. Please remember, if you are not uh, uh, qualified for the industry asking specific requirement. So I'm so sorry, we couldn't uh, put you in the program. The, we have also restricted visa rule. Next, yeah, Ibu Didin will tell us about what is that. And minimal two years study, we'll have that internship. So this uh, global internship, okay? So we have four, study abroad. Summer, winter is customized. We have dual degree. We have global internship. Oh, five. We have collaboration lectures. Okay. Okay. Now, it is actually asking for fee. Patricia, I have this one from your website. So yeah, fee year 2020 and fee year 2021. This is international students. It's about this. 
Any, uh, have anyone see that? If you won't have a question, yes, we do ask for a partner discount, but I don't think it's going to range that much from here. <laughs> but uh, this is the indication. You need to think about your budget. Okay. We have the accommodation. Uh, there is the fee for 226. Remember, Australian US dollar, not US dollar, Australian dollar is about 9997 nowadays. It's not US dollar, okay? So careful in, 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 in calculating your fee and your tuition, living, and cost. So I put it here for you to see a single double actually from 200 to two. Yeah, the top is 226, yeah? The lowest is 172. It was a single and double room. Uh, you can ask Patricia which one is <laughs> much closer than. Uh, all of them actually walking distance, Ibu. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, living expense, they say it would be good if you have Australian dollar 3,300 for one year. Okay. So, any question later, later on? Now we will give a presentation to Ibu Didin. Ibu Didin? Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing your time. Uh, we are expecting your information about visa to Australia, the rules and regulation. Kindly share Hi, it. Hi, everyone. It's How your time. You? Hello? Yes, Ibu. Yeah. Now is your time. Yeah. Okay, thank you for having me and inviting Connect as the representative of student visa as we are having um, agreement with University of Ciputra and um, we will very happy to help um, students to arrange and assisting their students visa especially um, to go to overseas to continue their program of study. So I would like to share about my presentation. Okay. Okay, so everyone can see the... Yes, it's good. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so we are specialized, we're specializing in visa and of course including of the students visa and at the moment we are more than happy to have a time with collaborating with Curtin and also Chiputra University for explaining a little bit about um, students visa and all the requirements. And then, okay, for the general information, what is students visa? And then the next, how much is the visa application? It's related with the fees and other costs include inside that. And what are the, what are the documents required? And how is the process? Processing. Okay, actually, student visa is something um, permit for your study to overseas. So it related with how long program you will join at the university or institutions, and then um, for Australia, you have some of advantages or I can say benefits for uh, if you have if you help them um, student visa so okay for student visa of course you can participate in eligible course of study in Australia and you are able to travel in and out as many times as you can as long as the visa is still valid. And then this is the spatial thing. If you study in Australia, you can work up until 40 hours every two weeks since your course starts. So um, not every country has this benefit. This is spatial um, reg regulation and laws from immigration of Australia to international students, especially in Indonesia. Okay, <clears throat> if some of you 
guys ask how long can I stay? It depends on how long will you study or how long will your program continuing or based on the course you intend. And then in the visa, in the student's visa, sorry, in the student's visa, there's some um, items that you have to, um, more like you have to fully attention. It's like OSHC, it's called like, in Indonesia, we call student's insurance, overseas student health cover, and also COE. COE is issued by the official um, school or official institution that you already uh, accept or you already admitted, such as like Curtin, if you already apply and then they admitted to you as one of their international student, then Curtin will issue your COE. COE and then um, actually there will be um, OSHC or like student insurance okay okay next and then length of stay as i said before that how can i how long for i can stay in australia it depends on your course or or on your program but if we if we seen the if we seen the immigration department regulation it also depends it's separated from how many years or how many months you will uh, study in Australia. So if for example, so I give you an example. If you if oh, sorry. Sorry. If you study for at least 10 months or longer, and then usually the say period is um 15 months because they will give you some caps sorry um no i mean like two or three months like 15 months like for example like your study um 10 months until 12 months a year and then the immigration will give you a gap after 12 months for example if your study finish at the end of November or December, so your visa usually uh, end by February or early May. So <clears throat> same like um, if you if your study until October, January until October, and then um, they will give you two gaps month period, for example, until um until january end of january or maximum until early of february why will they give gaps to me it, because the immigration um anticipated if you have something needs to be done <clears throat> after your program and then you still have something that you need to um rearrange or you need to um how can i say like there's something need you to rearrange more then they will give you more time for your for you for you to finish your program so in other words it is flexible if only you have a problem let's say with your study or your certificates not coming out they still have flexible time for that yes right? exactly Okay, COE. COE is uh, we call like confirmation of enrollment. As I said before, if you apply for Curtin University and you meet all the requirements as an international students and they, they admit you as their student for that intake, then they will give you confirmation of enrollment. So if I'm not mistaken, um, you have to pay some of some of their tuition fee and also the students insurance OSHC and then after that maybe one or two days they will give you COE to for you to continue to arrange your visa okay 
Okay. Um, this is like um, processing time. We cannot we cannot say this is a persist like persistent like um, okay. For helicos, we need like 74 days. It depends, actually it depends. But in general, in most of our cases, 85% of international students will get used or updates after two weeks or maximum four weeks after we submitted the document and also um, health assessment. So this, this is only the rules, regulation rules from the immigrations. What happens if I, I, don't, I don't get any updates until two weeks? Well, we will follow up the Department of DFAT. The DFAT, uh, DFAT is Immigration of Australia who um, controlling and processing your student visa. We will ask them by email, we will keep following them, but as they have timelines timeline schedule they usually uh, check about our application and others but they also have time frame for each visa type to proceed okay. and then okay this is for the postgraduate this is just like for you to know about postgraduate research students if I say that most undergraduate or bachelor or diploma program in at first um, immigration usually give um, give the student caps for at least two months or three months, but for graduate research students, they will get six months longer after the program has been done. So as Ibu Suryani said that, yeah, maybe you need to uh, rearrange maybe you need to rearrange about your your assessment or you you need to uh, check about your something before your program done so they will give you more time or maybe your thesis or something like that <clears throat> for primary student is for uh, I don't think I need to to explain yet because it's not suitable with your program okay okay um I will compile the question later on. I will continue first. <clears throat> okay, for student visa fee, this is separately, of course, separately from the tuition fee of your program from Curtin. So after you compiling your document and then you're ready to give your document to us, after we submit it, I will I will explain later on about the what kind what kind of the document that you need to submit it as a student visa. For the student visa fee, uh, it depends with the currency of Australian dollar. But now uh, we can say update the latest update is six hundred and twenty Australian dollars, and you pay it by credit card. So. We cannot pay by cash, or you cannot transfer to um, our our bank account. No, they only um, they make you easier and efficient, so you can pay it by uh, credit card. Okay. Okay. Uh, separately from the students' visa fee, there's any additional cost for students to apply for students visa Australia. There will be health checks and for police certificate and biometric, it's only when needed, it's case by case. So only certain case that needs police certificate and biometrics because for Australia, um, the mandatory thing is for health checks or health assessment. So if you ask what kind of uh, what kind of assessment that I will do for my health for my medical checkup? There will be uh, there will be um, urine tests and also X-ray tests, X-ray tests and other like physical condition tests like <clears throat> um, your height, your weight, and then 
do you wear glasses or do you wear contact lens like that and you must meet the appointed doctor from the embassy or, or immigration and you cannot do the medical things check up with randomly hospital or randomly doctor or physicians no but you have to do it with appointed doctor and appointed hospital from Australian embassy okay okay these are the documents required that you need to prepare before you go to the next steps for visa submission this is passport photo and others old and current passport and for australia because um the systems there to do it online so you can just scan it and send up send send up send us by email and then we will processing all the visa to you so these are the document required if you still have any question or you still confused um, about the particular each of these documents you can contact us of course we will more than happy to explain to you and to give you some advice how to compiling them okay 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 so, that's the last part Oh, that's um, the example. Yeah, this is like I give some exp uh, some example like um like a uh, form, but we can discuss later. And then the step first step, okay, okay. Uh, first step, help. Okay, I'm sorry. It should be like uh, you can you do it the document submission first, and then. I'm sorry, I apologize because this um, the first step should be step two because we have to submit the document first and then you do it for HAPID online and then you can meet the final physician, doc appointed doctors and then next for this uh, biometric, the step three is case by case. Not, not all the students will need for the biometrics and then the next four, we just wait until the visa outcome. So step two, step one, step three, and step yes, four. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> because you, uh, because you, ha you need to get the HAP ID first. We just, we as the consultant will submit all your document, and then they will print us um, like barcodes HAP, and then you give it to the appointed doctor and then the appointed doctor make assessment of your medical and everything do it by online so you cannot ask the doctor about your result of your medical because the doctor will um automatically send the uh, send the uh, result of assessment go through the australian immigration so okay. the student will cannot have the um, like document of their result okay Okay, um, after that visa outcome, uh, if you if you have, okay, if everything done and smoothly and then for a couple of days we waiting and then the outcome is coming and then there's two, rejection or granted. Both of them you will get a written, a written statement from the immigration, from the consular. So either way you get rejection or you get the grant both of them you will have in writing and there will be a statement if if the student uh got the rejection or the immigration did not satisfy with all your documents and information that you submitted before and then they will they will explain why they will explain, okay, because of you have an insufficient document, insufficient information that I get not, I could not make it to grant your visa. Okay, so the next time you can prepare more or you can fix everything in document and information and you can reapply for the next for the next time. 
if you have uh, approval, they will give you the details of the brand number visa, about the ID visa, and then for the validity, validity visa, for how long you will be eligible to study in Australia with the provider. If the provider is curtain, they will, uh, they will read, they will give the written curtain with uh, the Krikus number. Krikus number is the ID of curtain. And then um, what is the, what is the law being a student? Okay, so, so you can work as a part-time for 40 hours, as I mentioned before, something like that. So, uh, if, if your visa already approved and grant, and you can traveling, you can fly to Australia, and then you can start to study in Australia. Don't forget to uh, packing up your things like COE, like OSHC, like insurance, and then of course your visa. Because your visa is no longer attached to your passport. So you will have a um, printed out visa so you can print anywhere and anytime as much as you like. So your visa will be sent to your email. So anytime you need your visa, you can just print it out without without attach in your passport. It's not like it's like like US visa, it's not like Canadian visa. It's just like a pa paper, just five or eight pieces of paper for students' visa. Okay. Okay. That's Is good. there any then, questions? Yes. So this is the Ibu Didin uh, contact number and email. Yes. All young friends, you can just print screen this one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about that when they want to go. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so do, uh, do not forget, uh, all friends, do not forget this is necessary for you to learn about. This is necessary for you to know about because we, when we are across the border of our nation, there are going to be a lot of regulation, but do not be afraid. Many yes. people already done this, done that, but just obey the rule, okay? You don't have to ask me to go to immigration to pick you up. Promise me that, okay? <laughs> okay, now. Yeah. Okay. If there's any question or if you want to ask more about visa students, um, I will be more than happy to help you for the information for the documents, how to collect, if um, how many I should prepare for student visa if I want to go to Curtin, and then um, what what else should I uh, prepare for another information? Maybe for GTE, maybe we can GTE is one of the uh, important part. GTE is this general um, like written personal statement letter so you have to provide it when you apply for the student visa so you have to prepare for your why you want to study in australia why you want to join to curtain what is your post study back post study plan and then why do you choose curtain something like that and you can you can discuss with us <clears throat> thank you thank you Ibu Didin. okay thank you for I think before we going to the uh, further area, we have to take picture first. So I think we take all. Yeah. Can can we? Yeah. Okay. So we need to take a picture just for uh, not for only my happiness, <laughs> but this is the campus uh, documentation. So everybody, put your best pose. Ibu Ovin will tell us the <laughs> the one or two, three. Okay, Ibu. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Okay. The other. The other. We have yeah. about fifty nine. For a minute. Okay. One, two, three. Done. It's two pages, three pages. 
We have a lot of uh, participants. Yeah. There are so three pages. Okay. One more. One, two, three. Cheers. Thank so, you. Thank you, young friends. We have <laughs> we have uh, uh, Nicholas with us. Pa Nicholas, our head of program. Thank you, Pa Nicholas, to being with us. Uh, we still have Patricia. We have Budirin, but uh, Professor Simon already say uh, sorry. Have to go uh, first. He is in Perth. <laughs> now we come to the question. So uh, if Many of you will uh, ask where we are now, the status of uh, Chiputra, uh, how, where we are. So I want to give you the conclusion first. Okay. Okay. So actually, we have about five programs, right? We have MOU with Curtin University. Patricia said once we have the MOU with MOR with business school, design school, IT school of UC, we can go to Singapore, it's the same, Malaysia also the same, cut in Singapore, cut in Malaysia, we can do all what we writing about in MOA, that's mean. Uh, so what, what can we do now? We can do study abroad, yeah? We can ask Patricia to prepare us some summer visit, we can have dual degree, mostly in business management, uh, in international business. We might have design also. We have uh, journalism. Uh, we have FICOM, Ibu Patricia. FICOM is Ilmu Komunikasi here. So uh, actually, some of area like fashion design we can, but uh, we haven't got MOA first. So any one of you want to go for uh, dual degree, it is available. The, uh, the procedure will not taken too long. For the collaboration international lectures, I'm sure Pak Nicholas will try to arrange some uh, one or two subjects for semester three. So before you go, dual degree take uh, semester five, six and above, right? So yeah. if you are in year one and year two, you will enter the collaboration online lecture that is a team teaching between UC and Curtin University in specific faculty, like in business or in design. But then you have experience to know what is the difference of learning culture. It is different, my young friends. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the student that came from abroad, uh, come back, tell us they have a very different things about writing a side. Yeah? Let's say you have to put uh, any citation uh, when you quoting things. Now, that's one of the typical differences with us. Maybe because we are entrepreneurship, most on, on project-based learning, that we don't have to see everything because our, our entrepreneurship skill is very new and the road of the study also very new, but it is important in Western culture of learning, okay? So, that's year one and year two will take your experience to engage more until you are ready to go for your uh, dual degree uh, with our partners abroad, okay? So the last one would be internship. So I, I, I just, uh, we have a very good relationship with Australian Council General here. And he already tell us that they have the work and study visa. That means you can study and you can work for each of each six months. So you better be careful in arranging your document because one step wrong, you cannot do that or study with work. So you better be clear. I will work with Curtin to tell you what kind of internship that you are available for, right? So until that step, I think that uh, we'll go for the semester five, six and seven. Uh, I will uh, keep telling you, uh, we will share this online series like this so you can be aware about what you need to do, what you need to prepare, and don't forget, tell your parents as early as you can because this is not a small money. For some of you, it may look like on only one car, ma'am, <laughs> only one Fortuner car or one Innova car but it is investment of your parents. We are teaching you here in UC to be careful with your investment, okay? So it is your time, it is their money, 
but you better complete all your study, okay? So any question? Any question I have? It is anything that, is it finished? Is it finished? Okay. So any of you want to raise hand to ask, maybe? Yeah, yeah? can I see that? I stop sharing first. Okay, everyone is satisfied. Don't forget to put a feedback in a form. Uh, Ibu Ovin already shared in chat, yeah? Don't forget to fill in. We have about 65 uh, participants in this series. Let me know if you need more on whatever it takes and what is not covered yet. So I take Professor Simon, I take Patricia, I take Ibu Didin with us, but maybe I forgot things that you need, just let me know, okay? So it is very nice for me to talk with you here. Uh, especially thank you for Patricia. So especially thank you for Pak Nicholas, Ibu thank Didin. You. Thank you, Ibu. Anyone thank here? You. No, thank you thank for you <laughs> thank you for the committee. Thank you, girls, boys. Love you all. Okay, take care and be uh, safe. Can I add one more, Ibu? Of course. Um, so I'm. I'm I'm not really sure if I can, if I have already answered questions on the chat room, but I yeah. have put my contact details in the yeah. chat room as well for, for you guys, students, to uh, actually email me, and that is my WhatsApp number there. Yeah. So Janice and uh, the rest, uh, William, that it, I am sorry that I can't talk. Uh, it's because it's so so many of uh, chat. So um, I appreciate if you can email me. Yeah. If we any will, we will, we will any, uh, print it out and then send it to you, Patricia. Yes, but I I need their email address as well, Ibu, so to be able to <laughs> yes. uh, uh, to reply back with the question. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, yeah. University of Chiputra. Thank My you. apology, Pak Nicholas. I didn't know because you're. <laughs> You're in between the students. <laughs> That's a movie star, Ibu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully uh, we can establish uh, more activities and uh, not just a paper. Uh, yeah. Although the MOU, MOU is there, uh, signed by Pa Johannes uh, and um, um, our, my dean. Uh, but obviously, um, the, the MOU is just an MOU, so we need to, um, yeah. to have some things to work on. Yeah, but Nicholas? Um, okay. So again, Ibu Suryani, Mbak Ovin, and team, thank you very much um, uh, for having uh, Simon and I today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Patricia. Thank bye you, Bidit. Okay. okay. Thank you, See guys. You. See you, you again. Bye. bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Good luck. Bye. Have a good weekend. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Nice to have you here. Ah, good looking, everybody, eh? Okay.